Ignacio. Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? And that was quick. Okay, guys, invite people. Pray, be prayed up. Ask the Spirit to fill us and invite people to glorify our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I know we have mods, but I don't think the mods that post verses are here. If you guys are wondering why I keep doing this, it's because my nose starts itching. Uh, the Green Sheikh, were you born yesterday or the day before? Here, I want it recorded here. Guys, listen. I will debate, decimate, bury Halal Homer and Zakir Hussein. Challenge accepted. Tell them, let's set it up on David Wood's channel. They can call me on Skype. They're going to debate me on four topics. Here it is, recorded. I want to debate Halal Homer, Zakir Hussein on four topics. Does the Quran teach Tawheed? Does the Bible teach Trinity or the deity of Christ? Muhammad's view of the Bible. What did Muhammad think of the Bible? And is the Quran the word of God? Four topics. I promise you by the power of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, who destroyed Muhammad, buried Muhammad, that filthy scum of the devil in hell, I will destroy Halal Homer and Zachary Hussein, embarrass them for the glory of Jesus. So challenge accepted. Now, run like a little dog of the devil, like a stone licker, to your idols and tell them I'm calling them out. I hope that made you happy. Okay, you filthy dog. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on you or give you what you deserve. So now, for the rest of you, you guys now have it recorded. But these cowards, these stone lickers, Ya Alam Sheikh Afan, since we bless the connection, Ya Alam Sheikh Afan, since we destroy the buffering in the almighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bless the connection, Lord. For the rest of you, these cowards are only men when they gang up on you, slit your throat, and rape your women like their prophet Muhammad. So glory to Jesus Christ, Ya Alam Afan, since we're What a way to start. Okay, folks, for, with that said, pray up, ask the Spirit to fill us, ask the Lord Jesus, bless the internet connection. Please, my God, yeah, I'll go follow the Spirit. Watch me to God, my Savior, King, Lord Jesus Christ, follow the Spirit. And I know we have some of the mods, but I don't think the mods that post verses are here. I don't see Protestant believer, he's probably busy, and I don't see first and last. Elias, I have plenty of sessions and articles on the Holy Spirit, especially... The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, New Testament. Look for them. So, first, last, you're not here, huh? Protestant, you're not here, right? Just want to make sure. Because I'm going to have to read the verses for you. So bear with me. Help me to help you. In time, as I learn how to work the technology, I'll try to do screen sharing where I can post the verses myself by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so everyone ready? Just want to make sure you're ready so we can pray and ask the Lord Jesus to take over for the glory of his name, for the glory of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Watch me around and say the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Jeshwin, you think too highly of me, and I appreciate your love for me, you guys, but you guys give me too much credit and too, think too highly of me. I am not all-knowing, folks. I don't know everything about the Christian faith, about church history, about the Bible. So... You, I appreciate that you think I can address every topic under the sun. No. The triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the infant wisdom and pleasure of the triune God has saved a body of believers. These believers form the spiritual body of the Lord Jesus Christ called the church, the spiritual bride of Christ. Each member is given specific gifts by the Holy Spirit that some other members do not have so that all of us learn to be interdependent, interdependent, depending on one another as we depend completely on the head, the Lord Jesus Christ, to nourish us, to feed us and build us up for his glory so that no one person becomes the focus, center of attention. So I'm not going to know everything. I'm not going to be an expert in every area. You're going to be gifted in areas I'm not, so that I look to you and depend on you as you depend on me, as we both depend on the Holy Spirit to supply all our needs, right? But thank you. Thank you for thinking highly of me. Okay, are we ready? Whew. For some reason, I got tired. 
Anyone? Okay, everyone in the saddle? All right. Let's ask the Lord to bless you. I'm going to say, King Lord Jesus Christ. Yehovah Father, Son of Spirit. Yehovah Shalom. Yehovah Shalom. Yehovah Shalom. Yehovah Father, Son of Spirit. Yehovah Nisi. Yehovah Nisi. Yehovah Nisi. Father, Son of Spirit. Yehovah Yira, Yehovah Yira, Yehovah Yira, Father, Son, and Spirit. Abba, we love you. Father, we love you. You are the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Avinu, Babu, Arayu, Chayi, Babat Mana, Yishim Shicha. Our Father, my Father, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Son of God, <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we love you. We depend on you. We cling to you. We trust in you. You are our hope. The Father's heart become flesh. The eternal love of the Father become flesh from the Blessed Virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. Increase in us, Lord Jesus. Wash us in your holy blood, Lord Jesus. Shield us by the power of your holy blood, the blood of your cross, Lord Jesus. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you also wash our loved ones. And my loved ones happen to be my daughters in my case. Wash them in your blood, Lord Jesus. Seal them by your Holy Spirit. Cover them by your blood, the blood of the cross. The blood of the cross of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God. Bless our loved ones. Bless my daughters. Bless us, please, Lord Jesus. Increase in us. Sin and throne upon our hearts and the hearts of our loved ones. My daughter's hearts belong to you. <clears throat> we love you, Holy Spirit. Eternal Spirit of the Father. Eternal Spirit of the Son. The Holy Spirit of the Father and Son. We cling to you. We cleave to you. We trust in you. We depend on you to transform us and fill us and nourish us and correct us, and perfect us, and sanctify us, and purify us in the blood of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sanctify our loved ones, and grant the grace of regeneration among our loved ones who are not saved. Seal my daughter, seal us, seal our loved ones for the glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take over, not just these sessions, but our lives. Every second, every minute, every moment belongs to you, Holy Spirit, and save us from our own sinful passions, from our lusts, from satanic temptation in the world and keep us in love with Jesus Christ. Illuminate us, Holy Spirit, with wisdom and knowledge from your presence to understand the word, to correctly interpret the word. Loosen my tongue and save me from stammering and confusion and stuttering. Rebuke Satan's attacks to cause us to stumble or to be distracted. And Holy Spirit, save me from error for the glory of Jesus and perfect my ability to recall the scriptures and interpret them for the glory of Jesus, purify our motives, sanctify our motives, not to do it for fame or fortune, and save us from being unnecessarily offensive. Please, Holy Spirit, fill my lungs, my chest, my throat, <clears throat> my voice, my heart with life from your presence and strengthen my voice and make it pleasing to the ears of your servants. To glorify Jesus Christ. We need you. We love you. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Father. Have your way in Jesus' name. Watch it. Mother of God and say, Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father. In Jesus' name. Okay, guys. Hopefully, we'll get the regulars here. Prophet Google, you're able to post, huh? Okay. Yeah, I'll post this. Joe Lamshire is here. What's up, bro? I thought you had a different nick, but it's okay. Joe Lamshire. By the way, Joe Lamshire. His partner, Ian, brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've mentioned them before. I'll mention them again. Joe Lamshire and his brother have a ministry. They're bodybuilders for the Lord Jesus Christ. They go around preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They also preach it in prison. Pray for him. Pray for his partner. Pray for the ministry. And here's their YouTube channel. Do me a favor. Click on his YouTube channel. Subscribe. Watch the videos. Recommend them to others. Help this brother's ministry to grow for the glory of Jesus Christ. And ask the Lord Jesus to watch over them and supply all their needs to be men of integrity who glorify Jesus Christ. So, guys, do that. Help this brother. We want to help all our brothers and sisters in ministry who do it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay, welcome, mods. I guess First Last is not here. And Protestant's not here. TMG, why do you want my Skype? I'm not taking Skype calls right now. I'm going to shut down my Skype because I'm, I have a topic ready. Guys, you understand? There's a topic, right? Help me to help you in Jesus' name. Do not go into side issues, side tangents, no debating and no arguing. Focus on the topic. Ask questions relevant to the topic so I don't stumble and cause you to stumble. May the Lord Jesus save us from that, and may he bless the Internet connection. Come on, guys. We have a topic ready. Okay, so let's dive into the topic. 
Let me just shut down my Skype in case someone decides to Skype me. All right? Yeah, I'm Sheikha. Please, Lord, take over. Yeah, I'm going to spirit. No, not today, Michael Lawler. You want me to just take customers and forget the topic? I can do that, Michael Lawler. It's up to you, friend. Let me just change the title for Michael Lawler, my friend. I don't care what Catholic Crusader says about you. You're okay in my book. Okay, folks. No first, last, no Protestant. What happened to these guys, man? Dude. All right. I'm going to have to wing it. Um, let me get the Bible up app open just in case because pro uh, what's his name? Prophet Google. Maybe a little too slow. Let me just get it. I'm going to have to wing it now. Hold on, guys. Let me start. Oh, boy. We were saying in the long moon I bear. Even though I have been praising the King James Version, I will use the new King James Version only because of the English. Some people, their mother tongue is not English, and archaic English is kind of hard. So bear with me and forgive me for that, right? Let me just find it. Okay, now. Before we begin, I'm going to have to see. When you're live, stuff happens, right? When you're live, stuff happens. Okay, Prophet Google, we'll test you out, see how fast you are. Now, when you're live, things happen beyond your control. So I got to just walk away for a second. All by I love you all by myself. I love you all by myself. La 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 la. Whistle while you were all by yourself. All by yourself. Don't wanna be. Come on, ladies, don't melt. Don't melt now. Oh, my. don't hate Joe Lamshire. I haven't hit the gym enough. I know you got muscles on top of muscles. Stop being a hater. Okay. Oh, my, my, say, I want to be, oh, my, my, say. Speaking of which, by the way, by the way, I love this shirt. In Jesus' name, let's watch this shirt. Look, it says, not today, Satan. The blood of Jesus Christ shield us from you. The blood of Jesus Christ give us victory over you. The blood of Jesus Christ protect us. And by the blood of the cross, the Lord Jesus damn you to hell and save us and our loved ones from you in Jesus' name. Speaking of which, did you hear who passed away today? Do you hear who passed away today? Did anyone hear the news? Yeah, I did get coffee, David Bhutan. Stay, take it easy, MG. Control it. Control it. Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen passed away of throat cancer. I think he was 65 years old. And why is that interesting? Because I don't know if you realize it. Protestant believer. Hermes passed away, Thomas? Which Hermes? What? Majid? Now, this guy just threw me off. He threw me for a curve. What Hermes? Protestant believer's alias is Eddie Van Halen. He goes by two names. Protestant believer and Eddie Van Halen. You said Hermes passed away? Okay, now this guy just threw me off. We're going to start the topic. But what Hermes are you talking about, Thomas? What Hermes, Nasha? All right. Anyway, let's begin. Pro uh, Prophet Google, let's see if you're able to post quick enough. If not, I'm just going to read the passages. Post Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Let's test it out. I'm going to have to read it for you guys. Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Let me know if I'm buffering, if you can't do it fast enough. Right. Panama, Panama. Uh, uh. All right. Pro Prophet Google, you're looking for your Sheikh, Sheikh Yahoo. I don't know if you guys know this, but Prophet Google studied under the feet of Sheikh Yahoo. Yahoo 
was the chef of Prophet Google. So just wanted you to know that. I guess, okay, Prophet Google, you know what? Give it up while you're ahead, dude. Only a Syrian will take 50 minutes to post verses. Dude, you're seriously getting verses that are taking you this long? My goodness. All right. Let me read, guys. Okay, let's go. Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Let's start. Focus. Help me to help you. No side talks, no debates. Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. I'm going to use the New King James Version. I want you to see what God promised to Abraham and through Abraham. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will bless you. <clears throat> and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is what I want you to focus on. The last part of verse 3. Oh, about time. Thank you, sir. Took you, what, 50 hours? And in, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I want you to focus on that pro promise of the triune God, right? What the Lord Jesus promised to Abraham. In him, the families of the earth would be blessed. In him, the nations of the earth would be blessed. God's desire, here's where you need to learn your theology. If you wonder why God chose a people, what was the purpose? What was the purpose in choosing a nation to be his possession on earth? If you read the Old Testament carefully, and this is where I need you to listen, you're going to learn deep theology, I promise you. Some of you have already heard me preach on this. So we're creatures of repetition. When we hear something over and over again, it becomes second nature by the grace of the Lord Jesus so that we can now fully absorb it, make it part of our spiritual DNA, and share it with others. The teaching of the Old Testament is that God formed a people to be his possession on earth through whom he would move the nations to worship him. Okay, you with me there? God's purpose wasn't to ignore the nations. God's purpose in singling out Israel was for the express desire of using Israel to be a light to the nations, moving them to want to worship their God and turn away from their gods and goddesses. Okay? But here's the problem. The history of the Old Testament teaches us that instead of moving the nations to envy, moving the Gentiles to want to worship the God of Israel. Israel succumbed to worshiping their gods and goddesses, thereby <clears throat> causing the nations to continue in worshiping their false gods, their idols, continue in their immoral, evil, gross practices because the message they sent to the nations was this. The message they sent to the nations was this. Hey, if they're worshiping our gods and goddesses, that means their God must not be so great. Because if their God was so great, why are they worshiping our gods and goddesses? You understand what Israel is doing? By turning to the gods and goddesses of the nations and by indulging in their immoral, vile practices. The message they were sending them was, hey, we like your gods and goddesses and we like your lifestyle more than our God, and the commands that he's enjoined upon us. So then what's the message you send? All right, then. If that's the case, then that means your God is not so great. Therefore, we're going to continue worshiping our gods and goddesses to our destruction. And that's why God was upset with Israel. Because instead of living in such a way that made them different from the nations, <clears throat> separate from the nations, specific practices and, and dietary habits and even their dress code so they would live in such a different manner, different from the nations. So the nations would ask, why are you so different from us? Why are your customs different from us? Why don't you do what we do? Why do you do things that we don't do? The answer would be because of our God, and you need to come to our God and abandon your gods and goddesses. But they failed. Everyone understand? They failed. I just want this to sink in for a minute. Did it sink in? 
Genesis 22, verse 18, if Prophet Google can post it. If not, I'll read it. Genesis 22, 18. Pay attention, guys. Don't be distracted. Help me to help you so you can focus and learn. Genesis 22, 18. Because it's going to get very good. Very exciting. Very controversial. If you've been taught a certain way, right, to think about the nation of Israel. Let's see how fast Prophet Google is going to be. If not, I'm just going to... Fire him and block him. All right. Do it. Does it take a minute to do it? Just say you can't do it so I can start reading because I read faster than you post. Unload a snack bar. All right. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. He's now nervous now. He's like, uh oh. Calm down. Just say logos. Okay, guys. God speaking to Abraham. What does he say? In your seed, not only in you, in your seed, in your seed shall all nations will be blessed. All the nations of the earth. Richard, you know you need to go, right? You need to get out of here now. Richard, you need to go. Get out of here. I don't want you here. Richard Kern, get out of here right now. Okay. Genesis 20, 22, 18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Okay? So it's not only in you, Abraham. It's now in your seed. In your seed, a particular seed, I will bless all the nations of the earth. Keep that in mind. The seed of Abraham would bring blessing to all peoples of the earth. And this is in Genesis, before God has formed the nation of Israel. Meaning, God has already shown us his heart. His heart is for all human creatures that he created to bear his image, come to him, know him, and be saved by him because he loves all nations, all humans, and he desires the salvation of them all. Sinking in? And this is in Genesis. He's not a tribal deity. He's not a tribal God. He's not just the God of Israel. He's the God of all the earth. The whole earth belongs to him. All the nations are his creatures, and he wants all of them to be saved. But covenantally, he's going to work through one nation to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Clear? Exodus 19, verses 4 to 5. Exodus 19, verses 4 to 5. Okay? Let me read it. Exodus 19, verses 4 to 5. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now notice what God says. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. All the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Did you get it now? God said, the entire earth is mine. Not only you, but I'm going to choose you, fashion you, form you to be my special possession. Because through you, my light will shine. You will reflect the light of my glory to the nations. The nations I created, the nations I own, the nations I love to bring them to saving knowledge in me. With me so far? Exodus 19, verses 4 to 6. Please, guys, pay attention. I repeat myself more than once. Focus. Okay? Isaiah 45, 17 to 20, 23. Isaiah 45, 17 to 23. Watch that. What does he say? Isaiah 45, 17 to 23. Watch here. I'm going to read it. Isaiah 45, 17 to 23. But Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, the earth, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited, 
I am the Lord. There is no other. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I did not speak in a secret place in a dark remote place where no one could hear me. It's not what I did. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. In vain seek me because seeking me is a waste of time. No. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I always speak what is right. I always speak the truth. I declare things that are right. No falsehood comes from me. That's basically what God is saying. Now watch here. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together. You who have escaped from the nations. They have no knowledge. Who carry the wood of their carved image. And pray to a God that cannot save. The nations are stupid. They pray to gods that can't save them. So what does God say to them? Tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? From the beginning. Who has told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord, Yahovah? There is no other God besides me. And a just God and Savior, there is none besides me. So now notice what he says. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. Did you see? Now he's summoning the entire earth that he created. He's summoning all the inhabitants that live all over the earth, not just Israel. All you inhabitants of the entire earth that I created, that I made, I want you to turn to me, look to me, because there is no God that can save you. And the gods you pray to, Cannot save you. And I want you all to turn to me. Bow the knee to me. Swear to me because I want to save all of you. Make sense? Before I move on, I want it to sink in because I'm going to go slow systematically. So you get the point. Does it make sense? Now, let me show you something else. Isaiah 42, 5 to 7. Isaiah 42, 5 to 7. Okay. Speaking of the servant, Isaiah 42, 5 to 7. Let me read this. Isaiah 42, 5 to 7. Thus says God, Yahovah. Thus says God, Yahovah, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out. The heavens I create, I stretch them out. Who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it. Who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. Your spirits are from him. The breath you breathe to live comes from him. It's his gift to all flesh, all animals, all life on earth. I, Yahovah, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. Talking about the servant. I will keep you, now watch, and give you as a covenant to the people. As a light to the Gentiles, not just Israel, to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. Are you seeing the pattern? Ooh, sorry. May the Lord God, Father, and Spirit fill me with breath. You seeing the pattern? A pattern articulated. All the way back in Genesis. Is it, you're seeing it, right? A few more so you see where I'm going with this. Now we're going to go to Isaiah 49, 5 to 8. Isaiah 49, 5 to 8. Speaking of the same servant. Isaiah 49, verses 5 to 8. Watch here. Same servant. And now, Yehovah, the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, the name of Israel, the nation, named after their progenitor, Jacob, so that Israel's gathered to him. I'm going to gather Israel to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, Yehovah, and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you, my servant, too small that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. You are much bigger than that. You're much greater than simply being my servant and simply saving Israel. You're much bigger and greater than that. 
So guess what you're going to do? I will also give you, my servant, as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. You should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, Yehovah, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhors, that's, that's the Lord Jesus, to the servant of rulers, he came to serve rulers. Kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship. Because Yahovah, the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, Yahovah. In an acceptable time, I have heard you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people. You, my servant, will be a covenant to the people to restore the earth. To cause them to inherit the desolate heritages. Everyone got it? Did it sink in? A poor means to hate. A poor means to despise. Everyone got it? Before I move on? So you're seeing God's heart from the beginning. God's plan from the beginning. The reason why he chose Abraham and formed a nation from his descendants. He told you. Because Abraham, my desire and my purpose is to restore all human creatures, all nations that I created, restore them to myself, reconcile them to myself, to save them. Because it's not just you I love. I love all of them. And through you, I desire to save all of them. You get it? And then in Isaiah, he confirms it because from Israel, from Israel, the nation, he forms and fashions a servant, an Israelite. And that Israelite will be a covenant for the people, will be a light to the Gentiles and God's salvation to the ends of the earth. So all turn to God through him and be saved. And I'm just giving you some of the many passages, some of the many passages. Now, for you Christians, I'm going to blow you away in a minute. And this actually will be a blessing for those confessions like the Catholic, the Orthodox, the Assyrian Church of the East, the Coptic Church, showing you how, quote unquote, the members of the body of Jesus Christ are co-redeemers. You want me to bless you? Catholics, Coptic, Assyrian Church of the East, Orthodox. You want to get blessed? Because... You have some Protestants who think it's unbiblical and even blasphemous to say that we can be, or even the Blessed Mother of our Lord Jesus can be a co-redeemer, meaning sharing in, participating in the salvation of Jesus Christ in that being his spiritual body, members of Christ, born of the Spirit, made one with him spiritually. Christ brings forth salvation to the ends of the earth through the members of his body. He works through us, his spiritual body, to bring salvation. You guys getting ready? You want me to show you? What do I mean? Let me show you this. Isaiah 49, verse 6, with Acts 13, 46 to 47. Let me show you this. Isaiah 49, verse 6. Here's what God says about the servant. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. Now notice this last part. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Here's the last part of Isaiah 49, verse 6. Let us see what Paul did with this statement. What Paul did with this statement. I, uh, Acts 13, 46 to 47. Speaking to the Jews who rejected the gospel. Then Paul and Barnabas, Acts 13, 46 to 47. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, you Jews. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Behold, we turn to the Gentiles, for so the Lord has commanded us. And notice what he quotes. 
I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Hold on, Paul. You just quoted Isaiah 49, verse 6. Paul just quoted Isaiah 49, verse 6, and applied it to himself and Barnabas as the spiritual members of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, God commanded us to be a light to the Gentiles, to be a salvation to the ends of the earth. I want this to sink in for a minute. Did it sink in? I don't know if it sunk in. So let me ask you a question. How unbiblical is it to say that someone is a co-redeemer, meaning that God in his love and mercy and compassion has chosen to work through the human members of the spiritual body of Christ, born of the Spirit of God, made one with Christ, becoming his spiritual body, that Jesus now works through the members of his body and uses them to bring his salvation to the ends of the earth. Acts 13, 46 to 47. Here's what Paul quoted again in reference to himself and Barnabas. I've set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Can someone tell me how unbiblical it is, is it to then say the blessed mother of our Lord Jesus is a co-redeemer because she participated in, because of God's grace, in the work of redemption and bringing about the salvation of the world. Anyone? Did it sink in? Try and let it sink in before I move on. Okay, now with that said, Panus, when you ask me how do I know, let me again give glory to the triune God, glory to the Holy Spirit, how real, how almighty, how alive the Holy Spirit is because he is life. My ability to recall scriptures is not something I practiced or something I did some, you know, memorization techniques. I'm letting you know uh, all glory to the Holy Spirit because he gifts us. He gives every member of the body of Christ gifts to be used by his power and strength to build up believers and perfect ourselves for the glory of Jesus. Early on, I realized that the Spirit was enabling me to recall this information in these verses. So he gets the glory. And yeah, and then did you, did you watch Leighton Flowers' response to vocab, my brother in Christ? Nothing, Katerina. Don't worry about it, sister. Just focus. It means that the members of the body of Jesus Christ are used and employed by the Holy Spirit to bring about the salvation of Jesus Christ because Jesus brings about his salvation through his body, the church. Okay? Everyone there? So let's again come back to the issue. According to the Old Testament, according to the Old Testament, focus with me. Let's not debate. I want you to get the main point. Israel was God's covenantal people, his chosen people. But why did he choose them? He chose them to save them, sanctify them for his glory, but for a greater purpose as well. He chose them to be his light, the light of the world and the salt of the earth. He chose them so that through them he could move the nations to worship the God of Israel. But if you read the Old Testament, now when you read the Old Testament, with that lens, you'll see how Israel is repeatedly failing in their mission, repeatedly failing in their task, dropping the ball, because what they're doing is they're running to the gods and goddesses of the nations, adopting their evil, immoral practices, thereby shaming God, and then showing the nations that Israel's God must not be that great because if he was that great, why are they over here worshiping our gods? I'll give you a modern example. Can I give you a modern example what I mean? It's a bad example, but you understand. A Christian runs to Islam, becomes a Muslim, starts worshiping Allah, and believes the Quran. 
You know what that tells the Muslims? You see, Christianity is fake. The Bible's corrupt because if the Bible is true and Christianity was the truth of God, why would Christians become Muslims? You see my point? What message would we send if we profess to be Christians, studying the Bible, only to become Muslims, worshiping Allah, following Muhammad, and then embracing their view of the Bible? It's corrupt and Jesus isn't God. That means in the Muslim mind, see, the Bible is corrupt. Jesus isn't God. Christianity isn't so great because if it was, why are they converting to our religion? Alicia, do you want me to send you out of here, my brother? You know, I love you, right? Let's try this again. Did you hear what Paul said? He quoted Isaiah 49, verse 6, when he said that God made him and Barnabas his salvation to the ends of the earth. If you're confused, you're not getting it. That's your problem. And I'm going to have to send you out of here, Alicia, because I'm an equal opportunist. Because you're not getting it, you need to go. Because you do not understand what Code Redeemer meant, even though I explained it. So let's sure you need to go, my brother. God bless you. And when you come to Arizona, eat for me. If I have to explain it to you, you need to go, brother. Everyone else got it, what a Code Redeemer is? Not a savior separate from Christ, but a human vessel being used of God to bring about the salvation of Christ. I don't know why he's not getting it, unless he's just trying to be argumentative. You get it now, everyone else? Everyone got it? I just want to make sure, because if I have to explain it when I already did, then it means the problem is with you and your tradition, not with the clarity of the point that I made. Okay, so if everyone's with me, I want to move on. So, you sure you got it, Alicia? Now you can come and take me out to buffet and you're paying for it. Okay? Now you can stay. Now you can take me to the buffet and you're paying for it, dude. And you're even paying for my phone bill. And you're even paying for my Skype that you called me up during the midst of the session. This is twice today, buddy. Okay? All right, now, for the rest of you, if you're paying attention... If you're paying attention, follow along with me. Ask the Lord Jesus to help you understand and to grant me clarity of speech. Now, so as far as the Old Testament is concerned, Israel is God's chosen people. Now, here's my question. Jesus arrives at the scene. The question becomes, now that Jesus shows up, now that he's inaugurated the new covenant, now that he's brought about the salvation of God, now that he's poured out his spirit and formed his church, the church of Jesus Christ, from that moment on, does the New Testament teach Israel is still the chosen people of God? Because now we're going to get into meat. Now I'm going to shake you and rock you, and I'm going to blow your minds away by the grace of God's Holy Spirit. Are you ready now? I'm not talking about the Old Testament period. We're now transitioning into the New Testament era, the New Covenant. After our Lord Jesus, after the New Covenant has been inaugurated, ratified, after the church of Jesus Christ has come into being, do we still consider the nation of Israel God's chosen people? Short answer, absolutely not. Now, are you ready for the evidence? And I'm going to explain what I mean and what I don't mean about that in due course if you're patient and let me move along. Don't interrupt me. Don't debate me. Let me first give you the case and I'll explain what I mean and what I don't mean. Because according to the New Testament, do you know who the seed of Abraham is that blesses all the nations? Let's look at Genesis 22, 18 again. If Prophet Google can post it in time. Genesis 22, 18. You ready? Genesis 22, 18. Let's see if Prophet Google can do it within a minute. If it takes him more than a minute, then I got to get this guy out of here. I got to block him for a week because he's getting me upset because he's taking too slow. Dude, Prophet Khalilabu, can you stop, bro? Because I'm waiting for you and it's taking you like five hours. 
Can we just, can you not, can you help me by not helping me? In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now, Paul is a Jew. He is a physical Jew, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He's not anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish. He is Jewish and he loves Israel. Let me show you what Paul does. Let me show you what Paul does with this passage. Are you ready? Let me show you what Paul does with this passage. Galatians 3, 15 to 18. I'm going to read it because this guy's too slow. It's not his fault. He's an Assyrian loser. He's born that way, so we need to pray for his redemption. Assyrians are losers, but in a good way. We Assyrians are losers because we lose our weight of sin, that burden of sin we've lost by the grace of Jesus Christ. See? Positive. Galatians 3, 15, 18. Guys, pay attention. Genesis 22, 18 says, In your seed, Abraham, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In your seed. Okay, let's see what Paul does with it. Are you ready? Galatians 3, 15, 18. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet it is confirmed. If it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now watch. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of money, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. Bam! Your seed, Abraham, is Jesus, not the nation, but Jesus who comes from the nation. Did you get it? Let me read it again, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. The promise given to Abraham came before the law of Moses. The law of Moses can do nothing to nullify the promise because the promise given to Abraham is not based on keeping the law. It's based on trusting in the seed, believing in Jesus. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. You understand what Paul just said? Paul just said, listen to what I'm about to say. The law of Moses cannot abrogate, cancel out, nullify the promise given to Abraham. Why? Because the law of Moses was given about 430 years after Abraham. But the promise to Abraham was this. Abraham, I swear to bless all the nations in your seed when that seed comes. He didn't say, Abraham, I swear to bless all nations by keeping the law that I was to give to Moses 400 years later. So understand Paul's wisdom, the wisdom given to him by the Holy Spirit. If the promise was given before the law, and the promise was based in the seed coming, and that seed blessing the nations, how then can the law nullify it or confirm it? Meaning, contrary to Hebrew Israelites, contrary to... Seventh-day Adventists, keeping the law or breaking the law does not break the promise that the blessing comes from Jesus, the seed, and not the law of Moses. You understand Paul's point? So this passage destroys Seventh-day Adventism destroys the Hebrew roots movement and the black Hebrew Israelites. Paul is saying the promise to be blessed with everlasting salvation comes from the seed, not the law. So now why are you insisting they have to keep the law to receive the blessing of God when God told Abraham long before the law, the nations are blessed because of the seed, not because of the law. Bam. You see the brilliance, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit shining through Paul. It's 
Sinking in? So, and by the way, what, what, why was Galatians written? Paul wrote Galatians to silence the ethnic Jews saying, shut up, because they're telling Gentiles you got to keep the law. He's saying, what do you mean keep the law? The promise to bless the nations, did it come from law keeping or was it made to Abraham 400 years before Moses? Well, it was made 400 years before Moses. And how would the nations be blessed? Through the seed, right? Yeah, not the law. Well, the seed is Jesus. Shut your mouth. It's coming to Jesus that grants them the blessing of God, not the law of Moses. Get out of here. You don't even know your law. That's what Paul is saying. You see what Paul is saying? Did it sink in before I move to the next point? Yes. I'm going to get there, Kyrios. Alpha Omega. I'll get there. Just be patient. Jam Cam, what does that got to do with the topic at hand? Your face is giving me PTSD. Okay. So you got that? Did it sink in? Christ witness? No, it's a little more complex than that. Let me repeat your question. Let me explain what Paul is saying. Excellent. I got an article, by the way. I'm going to give you an article. Christ's witness said, Paul is saying seed was interpreted to mean many people, but in reality should be interpreted as one person. No, let me explain what Paul didn't mean. Okay, excellent question. Let me break it down. Guys, I really need you to pay attention or you're not going to get it. The Hebrew word for seed, zera, is what we call a collective singular. It can refer to one person or it can refer to a collective whole, right? It can refer to your seed collectively. All my seed, meaning my daughters, right? So what Paul is saying is not that the seed is one person. He's saying that the seed is that which is formed in Christ. Whoever is in Christ is the seed. So it's talking about a collective seed, a seed that is formed in Christ. You have to be in Christ to be that seed. Otherwise, you're not the seed. You understand what Paul is saying? And I wrote an article on this showing Paul wasn't confused. He knew what he was talking about. You sure you guys want me? Because then I'm going to have to impact this. If you want me, I got to go a little deeper and I might have to do two sessions. Okay. When God told Abraham, in your seed, all nations would be blessed, he was talking about Isaac and his descendants resulting in Jesus, culminating in Jesus. So what God was saying, look, Abraham, you got many sons. You got Ishmael from Hagar. Then later he had six sons from Keturah and then Isaac from Sarah. He says, your seed will be numbered in Isaac, not in Ishmael, not in the sons of Keturah, in Isaac. Isaac is the seed and all who come from him. So the word seed, is a collective singular, but it refers to one particular line coming through one particular son and not all of Abraham's sons. You with me there? So in its historical context in the Old Testament, the seed meant through one line, through one individual, not through all the different sons and their descendants. So which individual? Isaac. Whose line? Isaac. And Jesus came from that line. So the promise is, you, Abraham, will bless all nations. You, Abraham. And from your offspring, Isaac. And through his line, Jesus. And it ends with Jesus. Why does that cause a problem, Joshua? Only in your corrupt mind. There is no problem. And I'll unpack it. Show me where the problem is, Joshua, unless you're just arguing to argue. Okay. Now, let me prove to you when it says your seed, Christ, Paul means Christ and his church. The church in unit Christ is the seed of Abraham. Can I now prove that to you? Okay, are you ready for me to prove it to you? 
I want to share, okay. Galatians 3. Galatians 3, 26 to 29. Joshua, what has that got to do with the salvation of Ishmael? The seed will save the nations, even Ishmaelites. You're not getting the point. The seed isn't formed to condemn others. The very fact of the seed's existence is for the purpose of saving the world. Are you even following this session, my brother Joshua? If not, I'm going to have to let you go. Okay, Galatians 3, 26 to 29. Here it is. Pay attention. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of, of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So now I am clothed with Christ. I'm one with Christ. Christ is in me and I'm in him. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And here's the key. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, singular, and heirs according to the promise. Bam. There you go. Galatians 3.29. There you go. If you are Christ, you are that one seed. And heirs according to the promise. You understand what he just said? If you are a Greek and you're in Christ, you are an Israelite. If you are a Russian and you're in Christ, you are an Israelite. If you are any ethnicity, nationality, once you're in Christ, you become the true Israel, the true seed of Abraham. But the reverse is true. If you're an ethnic Jew and you reject Jesus, you are no longer a true Jew. You're a fake Jew in the sight of God. Galatians 3.29. Is everyone getting it? I didn't write it. Paul did by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You got it now? Let it sink in. So you see what Paul says? The seed is Jesus and all who are united to Christ. If you're a Jew, you reject Jesus. You are no longer a son of Abraham. You're no longer an Israelite. You are condemned and accursed. So then how in the world are you going to say that the nation of Israel is still God's chosen people if they rejected Jesus? Where are you getting this theology from? You're not getting it from the New Testament. You're not getting it from Jesus or his inspired apostles. You're getting it from the traditions of Protestants. You caught it? I got more. I may have to do a part two. Exactly, Daydream. The fear of people calling you anti-Jewish, anti-Semite. Can I prove it to you now from the words of our Lord Jesus? I'm going to prove it to you from the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. John 8, 37 to 41, but I'll include 42. John 8, 37 to 41, but I'll include 42. Now notice what our Lord says to these ethnic Jews. John 8, 37. So 41, I'll include 42. I want to read the New King James because it's a little easier on the English. I know that you are Abraham's descendants. So physically, you are the sons of Abraham. Physically. Physically, you are the sons of Abraham. But you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I've seen with my father, and you do what you've seen with your father. But who's their father? Notice the response. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, guys, pay attention. He's talking to ethnic Jews, physically descendants of Abraham. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. So what is Jesus saying? If you were truly Abraham's children, you'll act like him. But you're not acting like him. You're not doing what he does. You're trying to kill me. Abraham didn't do this. 
And then he says, you do the deeds of your father. Who's their father? Watch. And then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, guys, this is for you who thinks that the Jews who hate Jesus, reject Jesus, belong to God and worship the true God. This is for you. The words of Jesus. If God were your father, you would love me. If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Okay, now before I read 43, 44, Jesus is our God, and he tells the ethnic Jews, if God was really your father, you would love me. Loving me is proof God is your father and you belong to Abraham. So what does this say of Tovia Singer? What does this say about that rabbi in that documentary, Marching to Zion, where you can see the demonic hatred, the hate he had for Jesus and Paul? Jesus said, loving me proves God is your father. So how dare you as Christians say to me, the rabbis worship the God of the Bible. The rabbis know the true God, even though they don't know Jesus yet, because they have the Old Testament. Well, Jesus is talking to Jews who had the Old Testament says, God is not your father. You don't belong to Abraham. Let me tell you who your father is. Let's read it. John 8, 43 to 44. John 8, 43 to 44. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he's a liar and the father of it. Do you see what Jesus just said? You Jews, though physically sons of Abraham, you don't truly belong to Abraham. He's not your father, and God is not your father, because if God was your father, Abraham was your father, you would love me and worship me, not hate me and kill me. But you show by hating me and trying to kill me, you are sons of the devil, and the devil is your father. Did it sink in? Did it sink in? So is Israel still God's chosen people? Is Israel still God's chosen people? Well, let me show you what Jesus says about the Jews who rejected him. Here you go. Matthew 8, 10 to 12. Matthew 8, 10 to 12. Speaking to the Jews who rejected him, and speaking of the Gentiles, the centurion who accepted him. Matthew 8, 10 to 12. Speaking to the Jews who rejected him, and speaking to the Gentile, the centurion who accepted him and believed in him. When Jesus heard it, Matthew 8, 10 to 12. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who follow, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. This Centurion, a Roman commander of a hundred soldiers, a Gentile, has greater faith than anyone I've met in Israel. You understand what Jesus just said? Okay, what? wait, 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 guys. Let me repeat what Jesus just said. The centurion, who's a Roman soldier, a commander of 100 soldiers, a Gentile, Jesus says, this man has more faith than anyone I've met in Israel. Let that sink in for a moment. Let that sink in for a moment. Now let me read. Let me continue. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Many Gentiles from the east and west will come and will eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now notice what he says to the Jews. But the sons of the kingdom, meaning you, you were given the kingdom, you Jews, You'll be cast out into outer darkness. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Talk about a knife in their heart. 
He goes, Gentiles will be sitting with your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you who reject me, you'll be thrown out of the kingdom into hell. I want to give you a minute for it to sink in. This is the Bible, guys. Don't pervert scripture, twist scripture, make it agree with your man-made tradition. Don't do it. Okay? And the Orthodox Jews know this. No, it's called destroying your filthy satanic theology that you think it's scripture, Dave said. An idiot like you that would slander people who love Jesus and his word more than your tradition. That's what it's called. It's called replacing stupid theology and idiots who embrace it. Everyone with me there? Even the rabbis realize Jesus' words, right? Did you, did you watch the documentary? Didn't that rabbi know what Jesus said? They're reading your New Testament and they see the words of Jesus and Paul and they understand the implication. So why would you sugarcoat it? In that documentary, Marching to Zion, you saw that demonic hatred when the rabbi, that old rabbi said, he called them the sons of the devil, saying your father is the devil. See, they're reading. They see it. They see it. You think they're not reading your New Testament so you're going to deceive them? We love you. You're the chosen people. No, we're not. Not according to Jesus and Paul in your New Testament. They know. You ready for more evidence? You ready for more evidence? Okay. I, I got a lot. I'm not done yet. Matthew 21. 33 to 44. It's a long one. Matthew 21, 33 to 44. And people tell me that I, I do what I do so I can get people to support me financially. Like that slander, that wicked, filthy dog who said, oh, yeah, now he's kind to Catholics because of his economic situation. Folks, you know the positions I'm taking won't make me popular, right? The positions I'm taking is going to make me Come under the condemnation and wrath of various Christian branches. Do you think what I'm teaching will, will get me invites to Calvary Chapel? These Calvary Chapel churches that bend over backwards for Israel? Think it's going to get me there? Do you think it's going to get me invited to certain independent fundamental Baptist churches who think that Israel is still the chosen people of God? Alex, are you acting up again, brother? Oh, that's what he said. Alex is telling you that a rabbi, Alex is a brother in Jesus Christ. He loves Jesus Christ. He serves Jesus Christ, reaches Muslims. But a rabbi told him, stay Muslim, don't become Christian. He's telling you how much the rabbis hate Christianity. I love you, Alex, And I'm equal opportunist. I will... Discipline all of you in love, baby. All right, now, Matthew 21, 33 to 44. Matthew 21, 33 to 44. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be patient. I'll wrap it up in the end and explain what I mean and what I don't mean. Okay? Matthew 21, 33 to 44. Jesus speaking to Israel. Guys, pay attention. Here, another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard. This is our Lord speaking. I love this parable. And set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Then last of all, here's what you got to pay attention. Their last chance, their last hope. Last of all, 
37. He sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. Now, before I move on, note the implications of Jesus' words to Israel. The vineyard is Israel. The vine dressers are the religious leaders. You see what he said? Guys, please pay attention. That way I know you're getting it. He said, I am your last chance, Israel. I am your last hope before God destroys you, your city, and the temple. I am now come last of all. All this time, prophets were sent, but now I come as your last chance, your last hope of getting it right. And last of all, that's it. It ends with me. He sent the son to them, saying, they will respect my son. You see it? 37. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Not obey him, not reverence him. Kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Before I move on, note what the Lord said. He already tells them what they will do to him before they do it. Even though I'm your last chance and I'm sent last of all, guess what? You won't turn. You're going to kill me. And when you kill me, guess what's going to happen to you? Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? They said to him, the people hearing responded, he will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard. He'll take his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits of their season. So they even bear witness against themselves. Now notice what Jesus said. Here's where you got to pay attention. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now notice 43. Therefore, I say to you, you Jews, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, wait. When's the last time you had these evangelical churches and Baptists? Emphasize 43. Here it goes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. You know what that nation is? The church. There you go. 44, whoever falls on a stone will be broken. You'll be broken to repentance. But on whomever it falls, it will grind them to a power, powder. Rather, be broken in repentance, be saved, before he comes and crushes you. Okay? I want to give it a moment for this to sink in before I move on. Do you see it? Again, I just posted it at 43. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Don't ask me what church before I block you, Steve. Don't be that stupid to start division. The church of Jesus Christ, which is now scattered all over the four corners of the earth. Are you with me there? Even if you believe the Catholic Church is a true church, the Catholic Church will tell you that even these other churches that are Trinitarian are valid and part of the spiritual body of Christ. So don't be that silly. And the Orthodox would say the same thing. Everyone got it before I move on? Because I got a lot more to cover. I got to go slow, though. I got to go slow. I got to go slow. And your Jewish Christian friend is the heretic. He's the heretic. Don't let Angie, don't let bullying, rhetoric, emotional manipulation sway you from what the Bible teaches. Take a stand for the Bible. You anti-Semite replacement theology? Say, you know what? Take your statements and may God damn your statements to hell and save you 
and have mercy on your pathetic soul. They're going to vilify you. That's okay. So what? Let them vilify you. And? Okay, now, let me blow your minds away. Do you want me to now show you what God said about Israel in the Old Testament is now said about the church? The things that God said about Israel, the New Testament says about the church of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Are you ready for that? Because what is the nation that bears fruit? The church of Jesus Christ. The things that God says about Israel, he now says about the church. Okay, let me show you. Let's see if you catch it. Okay. Hold on, let me get the verses for you. Okay, let's see. You ready? The thing said about Israel, now said about the church. You ready? Come on now, because you guys are going to really get blown away. Exodus 19, verses 5 to, 5 to 6. Exodus 19, verses 5 to 6, about Israel. Now, therefore, if you'll indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now watch. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Remember that language. You, Israel, shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Now, kingdom of priests, holy nation. 1 Peter 2, verses 3 to 5. 1 Peter 2, verses 3 to 5. Pay attention. If indeed, talking to believers, Jews and Gentiles, who believe in Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 2, verses 3 to 5. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him, the Lord Jesus, as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That was 1 Peter 2, verses 3 to 5. But now, 1 Peter 2, verses 9 to 10. Pay attention. 1 Peter 2, verses 9 to 10. But you are a chosen generation. Hmm. A royal priesthood. Wow, where did I hear that before? I have chosen you to be... A holy nation, a kingdom of priests. You, the church, chosen generation, a royal kingdom, priesthood, a holy nation. Remember what Jesus said? I will take the kingdom of you from you and give it to a nation. First Peter 2, verses 9 to 10. You, believers in Jesus Christ, chosen generation, royal kingdom, priests, a holy nation. His own special people. Doesn't that sound like Exodus 19, 5 or 6? A special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Is, did, did you get it before I move on? Did you get it before I move on? Revelation 1, 5 to 6. <laughs> Revelation 1, 5 to 6. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood, verse 6, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Revelation 5, verses 9 to 10. Revelation 5, verses 9 to 10. Pay attention because I'm going to reread Exodus 19 again. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, and people and nation, not just the Jews, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. We are the kings and the priests, 
the chosen people of God to reign on earth. What did he say in Exodus 19, verse 6? And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Hmm. Can I ask you a question? Why does the New Testament writers take what God said about Israel and apply it to the church of Jesus Christ? Why do the New Testament writers take the promises given to Israel and transfer it over to the church of Christ, the church made of people from all nations, tribes, and languages? So it's not that replacement theology. It's expansionist theology. The true Israel are all nations, even ethnic Jews, who turn to Jesus, the true seed, the true vine, the true Israel, who makes you a true Israelite in the sight of God. There's more. I'm not done. Because I'm going to just do one session on this, it looks like, and I'll be done. Here's really where you're going to get shocked. You really want to get shot? You're going to get blown away. This one's really going to upset you guys if you don't believe what the Bible teaches and want to explain it away to agree with your man-made tradition. Watch this. Isaiah 60, verse 14, speaking to the Israelites. And the sons of those who afflicted you, Isaiah 60, verse 14, and the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bowing to you and all those who despise you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. So the Gentiles who oppressed you Jews, they will come and bow before your feet. All those who despise you shall fall prostrate at the soles of your feet. And they shall call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So notice the promise. I will make the Gentiles who oppressed you Jews, they will come and bow and prostrate before the soles of your feet. You guys ready to get blown away? Are you guys ready to get blown away? This really, I, I, I'll be shocked if this does not blow you away. Revelation 3, 7 to 9. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, Revelation 3, 7 to 9. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, to what? The church in Philadelphia. The church. In Philadelphia, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he opens and no man, no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept my word and I'm not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those get ready to be blown away. Those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews, they are not. I will make them, those who say they are Jews are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make these Jews, them, come and worship before your feet to know that I have loved you, the church. Wow. Wow. What are you going to do about that? You guys who think Israel is still the chosen people. God took what he said to the Jews in Isaiah and now applied it to the church. He's going to make the Jews bow down to the feet of Christians, the church of Jesus Christ. And he's going to make the Jews confess, you, Jesus, love your church. Revelation 3, 7 and 9. Enough of this stupid theology that makes the church an afterthought and second best to Israel. That's an insult to our Lord. It's an insult to our Lord. You with me there? I just want to sink in before I move on. Now, what's painful is, what, what did Jesus say? They say they are Jews, they are not. You know why? He's not saying ethnically they're not Jewish. 
He's saying you can be an ethnic Jew and be a fake Jew in the sight of God because God doesn't care about your ethnicity. He wants you to be a spiritual Jew, a spiritual Israelite, a spiritual son of Abraham through faith in Jesus. Okay. Now, what church was this? What church was this? The church in Philadelphia, right? But let me blow you your let me blow you a little more. Wait, Dave Sen, before I block you, Dave Sen. Send you on your merry way with your replacement theology nonsense. Okay. Let me blow you a little a little way a little more. Remember, Philadelphia, there were Jews there, ethnic Jews, and Jesus says they are not really Jews, they're fake. Their synagogue is not a house of worship, it's a house of Satan. Let me ask you a question. Revelation 3, 9, I'm going to post it. Okay. And I'm going to show you Jesus saying this about the Jews somewhere else. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Jesus told you the synagogue of the Jews is the house of Satan. God is not worshipped there. They think they're worshipping God, and they think it's a house of worship, but it's infiltrated by Satan. It belongs to Satan, and they're not really Jews. Why then would you tell me, Rabbinic Jews or Jews worship God when Jesus tells you they're not really Jews, their places of worship are an abomination, it belongs to Satan. Are you saying Jesus is wrong? Who is that prophet Google? Who's not able to respect the rules? And that's the church in Philadelphia. Now, what does he say to the church at Smyrna? Revelation 2, verses 8 to 9. Revelation 2, verses 8 to 9. What does he say to the church at Smyrna? Revelation 2, verses 8 to 9. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and last, who was it and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich, spiritually rich. And I know the blasphemy. Of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Again, he says the Jews living somewhere else, these Jews here are like those Jews there. They're fake Jews in my sight, and their synagogues belong to the devil, not to me. Wow. Did you catch it? The Jews who denied Jesus and blasphemed his name in Philadelphia and the Jews who denied Jesus and blasphemed his name in Smyrna had this in common. Jesus says they're not real Jews and their places of worship belong to the devil. Revelation 2, verses 8 to 9, specifically verse 9. Revelation 3, 7 to 9, specifically verse 9. So what can we learn from this? It doesn't matter where the Jews live. It doesn't matter where their synagogues are. If they reject Jesus, blaspheme Jesus, deny Jesus, they do not worship the true God. Their places of worship belong to the devil, and they're not real Jews in the sight of the true God. Which brings me to that passage, Solus Christus. So they're not really Jews. Then who's a real Jew? Romans 2, 26 to 29, specifically verses 28 to 29. Romans 2, 26 to 29. Now remember, this is Paul, a Hebrew of Hebrews, who ached for the salvation of the Jews, who loved them, as willing to go to hell for them to get them saved. Romans 2, 26 to 29, specifically verses 28 to 29. Watch here. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man, meaning a Gentile, an ethnic Gentile, he's talking to the Jews, keeps the righteous requirements of the law, the moral law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? Will not God honor him, even though physically he's not circumcised? Won't God honor him? And will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, the moral aspects of the law, moral obligations of the law, judge you? who even with your written code and your physical circumcision are transgressors of the law, 
So what? You're physically circumcised. You break the law, you're going to hell. So what? The Gentile is not circumcised. If he keeps the moral law, God will honor him. Now watch, 28 to 29. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is inwardly, and circumcision is of the heart, being born again, regenerated, having the Holy Spirit cutting off your evil heart and giving you a new heart full of love and faith, in the Spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. What do you guys want, man? Paul is a Jew. You can't accuse him of being anti-Jewish. Jewish. Jesus is ethnically a Jew and the God of Jews and the Messiah of Israel. Can't accuse him of being anti-Jewish. Right? You want me to really blow you away? Do you guys really want to get blown away? Do you want to hear what Paul does with Sarah and Hagar? We're going to read it. Let me now blow you away. Paul, a Jew. You know what he says about the physical Jews and their covenant, which God ratified on Mount Sinai? You know what he calls them? Can I blow you away? And I'm going to read it, but I want to prepare you to so understand what you're reading. Paul says that the physical Jews who keep to the covenant given at Mount Sinai are Ishmaelites. Their mother is Hagar. And he says, Christians born of the Holy Spirit and united to Jesus, they are the sons of Sarah. And he says, Sarah is a picture of heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, and Hagar is a picture of earthly Jerusalem who gives birth to children of bondage. Did you know that? Paul said that? Can I repeat it again? I'm going to read it. Paul says the ethnic Jews, I'm going to show it to you. Paul says the ethnic Jews who follow the covenant that God made on Mount Sinai, right? The Jews of earthly Jerusalem, they are Ishmaelites. Their mother is Hagar because Hagar becomes a picture of Mount Sinai of Jerusalem on earth. We who believe in Jesus, who are not ethnically Jews, and even ethnic Jews who believe in Jesus, we are the true sons of Sarah, because Sarah is a picture of heavenly Jerusalem, the true Jerusalem above, that's our mother. Now I'm going to read it for you. Are you ready? Galatians 4, Galatians 4, verses 21 to 31. Let me blow you away. Galatians 4, verses 21 to 31. Galatians 4, verses 21 to 31. Are you ready? Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons. Watch what he does with... Now notice what he did, guys. He took actual historical events, actual historical people who actually lived, and he says, these people who actually lived in history allegorically point to greater spiritual realities. So watch. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, Hagar, the other by a free woman, Sarah. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise. You know what he means? God never promised Abraham to give him a son through Hagar. That was a fleshly decision, a carnal decision, a sinful decision based on weakness and lack of patience and trust. God promised to give him a son through Sarah. So Ishmael came about by God's permission through weakness, through sin, lack of trust and patience. But not by promise. God didn't say, I promise you, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son from Hagar. He goes, no, I'm giving you a son from Sarah. But Abraham and Sarah could not wait, were impatient, and Sarah thought she's barren and couldn't give him a child. 
So what did God do? All right, I'm going to let you go ahead and do what Sarah suggested so you can reap the consequences because of your flesh, meaning your weakness and doubt. You're going to have a son and you're going to create misery because of it because you didn't trust and wait on my promise. Everyone got that? So if I asked you, Ishmael and Isaac, who was the child promised to be the heir of Abraham? Ishmael or Isaac? Isaac. So where did Ishmael came from? Flesh? What do you mean? Ishmael was born because of weakness, because of sin, because of lack of patience, lack of trust. Ishmael was born. You with me there? No, he didn't hate Ishmael. Calm down, Myra. Calm down. No, he didn't. In Genesis 17, 20, he said he'll bless Ishmael, make him a great nation. Don't get too extreme on me. So let's continue. Let's continue. But he was born of the bondwoman, was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. Isaac is a picture of believers in Jesus, because Jesus is a promised seed. When you trust in Jesus, you then become part of that promise, share in that promise. The promise is yours. Through Jesus, the promised seed. That's what Paul is doing here. Because Ishmael and Isaac are symbolic of two different groups of people. Understand the wisdom of the Holy Spirit working brilliantly through Paul. Paul is saying, Ishmael, Isaac, they are symbolic of two peoples, the ethnic Jews and the Gentiles who follow them and trying to keep the law to earn God's blessing, and the ethnic Jews and Gentiles who trust in Jesus, the promised seed, and by trusting in him, receive the blessings of the promise. Everyone getting it? No, he did not become the father of Islam. Please, guys, stop that. He's got nothing to do with Islam. Stop. You understand what Paul is saying? That they're symbolic. Ishmael and Isaac are symbolic. They're symbolic of two types of people. The ethnic Jews and the Gentiles who follow them and trying to keep the law to earn the promise. And those ethnic Jews and Gentiles who trust in Jesus, the promised seed, and by trusting in him, inherit the promise because of him. Exactly, Rusty. Is it making sense? Before I move on? Okay, let's read. They're symbolic. For these are two covenants. You see? Ishmael and Isaac and their mothers represent two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. Talk about a knife in the heart of the rabbis. Paul, who was a rabbi, says, you rabbis, you are sons of Hagar because you're still trying to keep the Mosaic Covenant. You are slaves, and that's all you are. Wow, that hurt, Paul. Ouch! For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem. Ouch! Which now is the Jerusalem on earth and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above, heavenly Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem above, she is free. She's the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, O barren. Pharaoh is barren. You who do not bear, break forth and shout. You who are not in labor for the desolate, meaning Sarah has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promise. You Gentiles, you Jews who believe in Jesus like me, a Jew who believes in Jesus, we are the brothers and sisters of Isaac, and Sarah is our mother, and we inherit the promise. But as he was born according to the flesh, flesh back then, persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit. Even so, it is now. You know what he's saying right there? Ishmael, born of the flesh, persecuted Isaac, born of the Spirit. 
Likewise, the rabbinic Jews, the disbelieving Jews, are still persecuting us today because they're like Ishmael who persecute the promised children. What a knife. Ow. Ouch. Go preach that to rabbinic Jews and see how they're going to react. You caught it? Now let me let me read read the rest. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? And he's quoting Genesis. In Genesis 21, Abraham is told, cast the bondwoman and her son away from Isaac. This is in Genesis 21. Read it. And God says, do that. I'll be with the child, but cast them far away from Isaac because Ishmael and Isaac cannot coexist. So notice what Paul does with the scripture. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. You know what Paul is saying? You know what Paul is saying? Like Abraham was told, cast Hagar and her son away from Isaac, because the bondwoman and her son have no share in the blessing of Isaac. You Christians... Cast away Judaism. Get rid of Judaism and those Jews who insist you need to keep the law like Seventh-day Adventists. Hint, hint. Did it sink in? Have Nothing to do with them who want to bring you into the into bondage with the covenant of Sinai given to the Jews of earthly Jerusalem because you belong to heavenly Jerusalem, our mother. And Sarah is a picture of heavenly Jerusalem. And we who are born of the spirit like Isaac was belong to Jesus, the true seed, making us the true sons of Abraham and Sarah and making heavenly Jerusalem our mother. You understand what Paul said about ethnic Jews who reject Jesus? You know what he said? You ethnic Jews who reject Jesus, you are not the chosen people. You're not the promised seed. Jesus is. And if you reject him, you're rejected by God. You're no longer his chosen people. What else do you want, guys? You better believe they're going to hate us. The New Testament, Brat Mshicha. You have 27 books of the New Testament telling you what parts of the Old Testament are binding and what parts you've been freed from. Now let's read Galatians 4.29 one more time and we're going to wrap things up because basically I covered all the major points. Galatians 4.29. We'll wrap things up. Notice what it says about Isaac. But as he who was born according to flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Now notice... What we have in common with Isaac. What do we have in common with Isaac? What we have in common with Isaac is that we're born of the spirit like Isaac. Whereas Ishmael wasn't. Now let me explain what that means. Abraham was still vigorous enough to get Hagar pregnant. So it didn't require, require a miraculous act of the Holy Spirit. But when Isaac was conceived... Sarah was barren all her life, and Abraham was about 99 years old, and Sarah was 89. Yet still, at 99, with Sarah barren, she got pregnant, gave birth at the age of 90, and Abraham became vigorous again at the age of 100 because the Holy Spirit miraculously enabled Abraham to get Sarah pregnant, and the Holy Spirit miraculously caused the womb to conceive, so it was a miraculous work of the Spirit for a nine-year-old barren woman to give birth to a son, showing Isaac was conceived miraculously by the Spirit, like we are miraculously born of the Spirit spiritually to become the spiritual sons and daughters of Abraham. You got it now? Yes, we are all spiritual Jews. We are all spiritual Israelites. We are all the true seed of God.
Okay. Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. I got more stuff to blow you away. Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. Okay, let's read this. You ready? Uh, by the way, before I move on, I hope I didn't bore you, torture you, tire you out. I hope it's making sense because by the grace of God, this should be my final session for a long time because I won't talk about this. I've already done it here. Okay? This should be your position now. This should be your position. Enough of the nonsense that Israel is the chosen people. They're not. That doesn't mean God doesn't want to save the Jews. He does. He wants to save them and everyone else. That doesn't mean they don't have a role to play in end-time prophecy and bringing about the return of Christ. They do, just like the Muslims do. But we need to stop the nonsense of saying they're the chosen race. Now, Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 7. Now, let me sing to my well-beloved. Pay attention, the vineyard, the vine. What do you find in a vineyard? A vine. Now, let me sing to my well-beloved, a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in its midst and also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge please between me and my vineyard. My vineyard. What more could, I be, could have been done to my vineyard? What more care and love and nourishment could it receive from me? Right? What more could have been done to my vineyard that I've done, have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. God speaking. I will take away its hedge, its hedge of protection, and it shall be burned. I'll break down its wall that contains it so that people can come in and shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So God's vineyard, his vine, is Israel. And the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. He looked for justice, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry for help. Okay, so the vineyard is Israel. The vine is Israel. The vineyard is Israel. The vine is Israel, right? Okay. Now it's going to make sense. Now you're going to say, now I understand what Jesus was saying. John 15, verses 1 to 8. Now I understand what Jesus was saying. I am the true vine. Ah, not Israel, but I. I am the true vine, the true vineyard, the true Israel. Wow. Did the light switch go on? I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me, Jew or Gentile, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they, they gather them and throw them into the fire, they, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you meditate on my words and act upon them by the strength and the power supplied by the triune God, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. But this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Now it makes sense. He is divine. He is the vineyard, the true vine, the true Israel, 
And if we are connected to him, we are the true vine, the true vineyard. Wow. Okay, now, that's why one of Jesus' name in Isaiah is what? One of Jesus' name in Isaiah is Israel. His name is Israel. Did you know that? Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 6. We're going to read it. Isaiah 49, but we're going to read. Yeah, we'll read verses 1 to 6. Pay attention. One of the names of Messiah, servant, Jesus, is Israel. Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 6. Let me read it for you. Now it makes sense. Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 6. Now it makes sense. Pay attention. Here's where you need to focus by the power of the Spirit. Do not let anyone distract you. Focus. Tell me how many Israels you count. Focus. How many Israels you count. Okay. Let's read. Listen, O coastlands, to me. Take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he, shall, he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. And he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. I wasted all my energy. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work with my God. Now watch. I'm going to read the first part of three again. Verse three. And he, God, said to me, you are my servant, O Israel. So I'm a servant, Israel, in whom I'll be glorified. Now notice what he says to his servant. Verses five and six. And now the Lord says, who formed me, from the womb to be a servant, right? This is the servant Israel. To bring Jacob back to him so that Israel's gathered to him. Okay, now I'm confused. The servant is speaking and he says, God said to me, God said to me, you're my servant Israel. So he called me Israel. But in verse five, God says to me, and now the Lord says, to, says who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel is gathered to him. Okay, I'm confused. I thought you are Israel. Yeah, I am. But you're saying God called you Israel and that you're going to gather Israel back to him. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So you're Israel and you're going to gather Israel. Yes, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will give you my servant Israel who will gather Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So two Israels, my servant Israel, you're going to gather the nation Israel and you're going to save the ends of the earth. Did it sink in? It's right there. It's two. Reread it on your own leisure. My servant Israel, you're going to gather Israel. Israel gathers Israel. And this Israel that gathers the nation Israel will bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Ends of the earth. So the servant is one human person who saves the nation Israel and the nations of the earth, the Gentiles of the earth. And who is that servant? Lord willing, in a session, I'll show you it's Jesus in a future session. I've done past sessions on this. Jesus is that servant, Israel, who saves Israel and the nation. So if he is Israel and you are united to him and you become a spiritual body and he's your spiritual head, no wonder you become Israel. No wonder you become the seed of Abraham. No wonder you become the sons and daughters of Abraham. Yes, he does, Gary. 
He's still alive, almighty to heal and save spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. Now, let's wrap it up with these two final points. Jesus said to the Jews who hate him and reject him, who is their true father? I'll let Riaz post John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Okay. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. Okay, did you catch it? You Jews, ethnically, Satan is your father. You're sons of the devil. You have nothing to do with God the Father, nothing to do with Abraham, because you hate me and reject me. Now watch this. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. I'll let Niaz, Riaz, I'm sorry, post these verses, because there are only one. 1 John 3, 12. 1 John 3, 12. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Why did he slay him? Because his own works were evil and his brother is righteous. Now, did you catch 1 John 3, 12? John, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, Cain belonged to the wicked one. Cain was the son of the devil. Cain's spiritual father was the devil. And the fruits that he manifested proved he belonged to the devil. Because remember what John 8, 44 said? To the Jews who reject Jesus, you are of your father, the devil. He's a liar and a murderer. He murders and kills. Cain, Satan's son, murdered his brother. So Cain belongs to the devil, belongs to Satan, which is why he acts like his father. Like father, like son. If the devil is your father, you will bear the nature of your father. You're going to act like him. So if the devil is your father, you'll be a liar like him, a murderer like him. Evil like him, oppressive like him, a tyrant like him, and immoral like him. But if God is your father, you'll be holy like God, pure like God, righteous like God, loving like God, compassionate like God, humble like God, zealous like God, like father, like son. So again, did you catch that in 1 John 3, 12, Cain's father was who? Cain's father was who? 1 John 3, 12. Who was his spiritual father? Who did he belong to? The devil, the wicked one. Okay, good. Now let me remind you of the battle between the serpent and the woman. Genesis 3, verses 14 and 15. Let's, again, we're going to wrap it up. Just bear with me. Genesis 3, verses 14 and 15. I got, I got to get something to drink. Hold on. Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Okay, watch here. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. Yep, sparkling eyes. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. Pay attention. Because thou hast done this. You serpent has done this. Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou, thou go. And dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now pay attention to verse 15 to the serpent. And I will put enmity, hatred. Division between thee, you, the serpent, and the woman, and between thy seed, your children, and her seed. The seed, her seed, shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, let me explain this. Man, if you get this, you'll be blown away, because now you're going to understand the meat of Scripture. You're going to see what the Bible is talking about, an ancient cosmic battle. Okay? Let me explain. God says to the serpent, your seed, your offspring, will be at war with the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman. You will strike the heel because a serpent is poisonous. If it strikes your heel, you're dead. But he'll crush your head. Okay. So God is saying, from the fall, I need you to pay attention to this. From the fall, Satan will have spiritual children at war with the spiritual children of the woman, and he and his children will oppress and seek to destroy and murder the seed of the woman. 
Who was Cain? The seed of the devil, right? Cain belonged to the devil, right? Cain belonged to the wicked one, right? And he murdered Abel, the first casualty of the serpent seed. Abel, the seed of the woman, murdered by Cain, the seed of the serpent. Cain is Satan's firstborn son. Pay attention. Don't go into tangents now. Focus. I'll do a session on, on this. I'll go much deeper in a future session. The firstborn son of Satan, Cain, the seed of the serpent, murdered Abel, the seed of the woman. That's what John told you in 1 John 3, 12. Cain was of the wicked one, and he murdered his brother because Cain's father is a liar and a murderer. The serpent murdered Adam and Eve spiritually by causing them to sin and die spiritually. And his seed, Cain, murdered his brother physically, like father, like son. Yep, exactly. Deepra Kamur. Is everyone, is it, you're making sense? Is everyone getting it? Okay. Now, Cain's seed were destroyed in the flood, right? Cain's seed were destroyed in the flood, right? Only Noah and his family survived. All the seed of Cain, physical seed, were destroyed in the flood, right? Okay. I'm going to read now. I want you to catch this. Serpent, seed of the serpent. Please, guys, ask Jesus to help you to focus because you're going to be blown away. Seed of the serpent. The serpent is the wicked one, the devil. His seed, his offspring. Okay? Okay. Now watch here. I'm going to read Matthew 23, 32 to 39. Matthew 23, 32 to 39. But I need you to pay attention. Matthew 23, 32 to 39. Serpent, seed of the serpent. Jesus talking to the physical Jews, the religious leaders of Israel. Pay attention to what he says. Jesus is not talking to the physical sons of Cain. Cain's physical seed destroyed in the flood. Jesus is talking to physical Jews, physical descendants of Abraham. Notice what he says to these physical Jews, these religious leaders. Pay attention. Fill up, then, the measure of your father's guilt. All the sins of your fathers, all the sins committed by your fathers, starting from the first one, you're going to continue in their footsteps by sinning like they did, and now you're going to reach the full limit of how much sin I'll tolerate. The sin started by your first father, you now will be the generation that now reaches the measure of how much sin I will tolerate and once you reach that measure, I will now destroy you. You'll be the generation that reaches the limit of how much my holiness will tolerate. The fathers before you sin generation after generation, and I put up with it. But you'll be that last generation, and I won't put it up with it anymore. You understand what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying, you are that last generation where you now fill up the full measure of all the sins that your fathers before you committed, that I tolerated, you're the generation where now you reach a limit and I won't tolerate anymore, and now I will destroy you because of it. Okay, but now notice who their fathers are. Notice who their fathers are. Pay attention. Fill up, then, the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers. How can you escape the condemnation of hell? Dum dee -de dum dum. I don't think you caught it. These physical Jews are serpents, brood of vipers, condemned to hell. Meaning these physical Jews are not the sons of Abraham. They are the sons of the serpent. You serpents, 
the seed of the serpent, you brood of vipers, born of serpents and vipers. That's how who you Jews are, who reject me and deny me. You are the seed of the devil like Cain. Did it sink in before I move on? You serpents, the serpent, brood of vipers, the seed of the serpent, fill up all the measure of sin and wickedness started by your fathers that I put up with, but now no more. It ends with you. Okay, now, but watch here. Watch here. Here's where you're going to get shocked. What are the sins that their fathers before them committed? 34 to 36. What are the sins that the, their fathers before them committed? What wickedness did their fathers do that they're going to now continue in their footsteps? Let's see if you catch it. Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. That on you, this generation, may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth. All the righteous, innocent men, prophets, servants that were killed by your fathers. All of that guilt will fall on your head for continuing in their footsteps. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar... Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. I don't think you caught it, so let me quote it. Your fathers before you murdered righteous people, innocent people, and you continue their footsteps because you're going to murder all the prophets I send you, all the scribes I send you. You're going to murder them like your fathers murdered the righteous before you. So all the blood of the righteous murdered by your fathers will fall on your head. Starting with Abel. Starting with Abel. I'm confused. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. Yeah. Look when it buffers. Can you believe it? Lord Jesus rebukes Satan in Jesus' name. Look when it buffers. I'm confused. Cain killed. Cain's physical descendants died in the flood. But Jesus says, the guilt and the murder carried out by your fathers will fall on you, beginning with the murder of Abel, which Cain murdered, whom Cain murdered, that guilt will fall on you. Okay, now help me understand what Jesus just said. All the murder done by your fathers before you, which you continue in their footsteps will fall on you, starting with the murder of Abel. But hold on, Jesus. Cain murdered Abel. You're saying this generation will be condemned for all the murder that their fathers carried out. But Cain murdered Abel. How is Cain their father when none of Cain's physical seed survived? Because Cain was their spiritual father. They, like Cain, belong to the devil. They, like Cain, are the seed of the devil. So Cain is their true father, not Abraham. That's what he just taught you. Don't contact me by Skype. Get out of here before you get blocked. You understand what Jesus just said? Muz, I believe that your prophet Muhammad was a filthy scum dog bastard who, mar who married an... Um a married woman, his daughter-in-law, who raped women and prostituted women like your mother, treating them like whores. Right? Did you catch what Jesus said? Did you catch what Jesus said? You will continue in the footsteps of your fathers before you. You will murder the righteous like your father's dead. And so you will now reach that limit of how much evil I'll tolerate. The evil begun by your fathers before you. You're that generation that now reaches the limit where I won't put up with it. And now I will destroy you, the city and the temple. And you'll be responsible for all the shed blood, even the blood of Abel, 
which your father Cain, whom your father Cain murdered, the blood which your father Cain shed. But Jesus, how can Cain be their father? Because to God, it's not your physical lineage that matters. It's your spiritual lineage. You can be a physical Jew, but your true father is the devil, and Cain is your spiritual father, not Abraham. You can be a Gentile ethnically, but your true father is Abraham because of Jesus. That's what Jesus just taught you. And this is confirmed. And Riaz, if you can quote it, Mark 3, 31 to 35. Mark 3, 31 to 35. Confirmed by Jesus in Mark 3, 31 to 35. There came then his brother and his mother, and standing without, said unto him, calling him. Watch this. And the multitude sat about him. They said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. Mother and brothers seek for you. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my, my, brother, my brethren? Who are my mother, brother, sister? And he looked round about on them, which said about him, and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whoever, whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. You see what Jesus just taught you? My true family are those who do the will of God, my father. You are truly my mother, my brothers, my sisters. If you do the will of my, my father, the will of God. And what's the will of God? Mark 9, verse 7. Mark 9, verse 7. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. So God's will is, hear my son. Believe in my son. Trust in my son. Love my son. Revere my son, worship my son, obey my son, live and die for my son. Then you are truly the sons and daughters of God, truly the sons and daughters of Abraham, the true Jew, the true Israel, by faith in Jesus Christ. Whether you're Russian or Assyrian or Chaldean or Mexican, the church, whether you like it or not, True Israel, true Jews, the true sons and daughters of Abraham, the church of Jesus Christ, those born of the Spirit made one with Christ. If you're an ethnic Jew or a Gentile that rejects Jesus, God has rejected you. So to sum up, to sum up, does that mean the nation of Israel has been completely rejected? No. Even Paul says in Romans 9 to 11, in every generation... The Holy Spirit will bring ethnic Jews to believe in Jesus. But when they believe in Jesus, they are now part of the church. And at the end, when Jesus comes, that remnant of Jews that survive in his grace, he will then turn to those Jews, those ethnic Jews, draw them by the Spirit to believe in him, redeem them, making them one with his church, and then all of Israel will be saved. That's what the Bible teaches. I hope that was clear because my time is up. My time is up, but let me end it with this. John 5, 22 to 23. Three passages. We'll end it with three passages. John 5, 22 to 23. Here's what Jesus says. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which has sent them. So let me ask you a question. An ethnic Jew, like Tovia Singer says, Jesus is a fake, false Messiah. He's not the Son of God. Does God the Father honor Tovia Singer? Does God the Father know Tovia Singer intimately? Or is Tovia Singer a filthy, rabid, blasphemous, satanic dog, a pig in the sight of God the Father? John 8, 54 to 55. John 8, 54 to 55. 
We're going to end it with these two last verses. John 8, 54 to 55. Jesus answered, speaking to Jews, guys, speaking to ethnic Jews, John 8, 54 to 55. Okay. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him. You Jews do not know God. Do not know my father. You do not know him. And if I should say, I know him, not, I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. So guys, can I ask you a question? Jews like Tobias Singer, who reject Jesus, do they know the true God? Get lion out of here, block lion and get him out of here. This satanic nuisance. Jews who reject Jesus, do they know the true God? Do they worship the true God according to Jesus? So then how dare you Christians say the rabbinic Jews are worshiping your God? Jesus says they don't know my God because if they knew my God, they would love me and worship and honor me. Why are you Christians dishonoring Jesus by claiming something about them that Jesus denied? He, he says they don't know God. They don't know of my, the Father. They don't know him because they don't know me. Finally, 1 John 2, 22 to 23. Let's end it. 1 John 2, 22 to 23. 1 John 2, 22 to 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, whosoever denieth the Son, 1 John 2, 22 to 23, before the rapture, yes. Thank you, brother. Who is a liar? <clears throat> but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist. That denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Now notice, the liar is the one who said Jesus is not the Christ. Rabbis like Tovia Singer. Does not Tovia Singer deny Jesus Christ and blaspheme him daily by trying to convince people he's not the Christ? So according to John, is Tovia Singer a liar? According to John, John, since Tovia Singer does not believe Jesus is the son, does Tovia Singer have God as his father? Does he know the father? No, he is antichrist. Guys, why do you call Muslims antichrist and not Tovia Singer? Tovia Singer says Jesus is not the Christ. Jesus is not the son. John says he's a liar, a filthy dog of Satan, and he doesn't have the father and doesn't know God. Why are you going against the Bible? Anyway, Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is the eternal beloved of the Father. His heart become flesh. The Christ, the true Israel, and the church is the true Israel, Israel in union with him. Ethnic Jews and Gentiles who reject him are rejected by God the Father. But ethnic Jews and Gentiles who accept him our true Israel, the church of Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus reigns over all creation as King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you. We worship you, Son of God. Wash us and cover us by your blood and our loved ones, my daughters. Keep us healthy to use our health to glorify you, holy to delight your heart and provide for the ministry, O Son of God. Not to be a crowd pleaser and not to prostitute myself for fame or money. Make us men and women of integrity in love with you. Live for you and even die for, you, uh, die for you if we must. Filled more with the power of your Holy Spirit. And may you come sooner than later. Amen. We love you, Father, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Lord willing, take care.